Hello everyone, my name is Tiffany, I'm the Tipsy Artist, and today we are painting this beautiful original painting of mine. I'm going to try to get it to where you do not see the glare, there I go. Um, so this is actually, this is a print, this is um, from an original painting that I had done before. So this is called Code of Many Colors, and then I actually sell these prints um, at Michael's, Michael's stores. So this gives you an idea, thought I'd do a little self-promotion <laughs> for something. Um, I'm also teaching it as a class, but I do also sell it as a print. So if you're like, hey, you know what? I don't know how to paint. Maybe I just want to have the print. You can buy it at Michael's. And uh, our storefront there is a tipsy artist. And this is what it looks like and how it's packaged. And I also include a certificate of authenticity with that. So that gives you a wonderful idea of what that looks like. But for today, I will be teaching you how to paint this as well. We have a painting kit on my website, tipsyartist.com, that has all the supplies that you need. And um, I'm going to teach you and guide you step by step on painting this lovely lady here. So, all right. So we're super excited. Um, so I did want to say hi first from the studio. And then we're going to switch camera views to an aerial view so that you'll have a nice up close and personal look um, at my hands while I work and as I do the painting. And so that's what we're going to get started with right now. So here we go. And let me get my papers on, my little glasses, so I can see what I'm doing. All right. Here we go. Okay. Awesome. So I'm gonna get situated here. Scoot it up. All right. So with our painting kits, let's talk about those a little bit. We have all the supplies that you need with your kit. So we've got the supplies are here, your little bag of tools there and then we've also got your beautiful paint with this one and it has everything that you need like your napkins apron we've got your plates that come with it I've got a little bit of a head start over here and a little bit of some titanium white mars black and then the main thing that you'll have to get to prepare is going to be your water that's the only thing we do not have in the kit so make sure and get some water nearby and then it's got your traceable line art. And I've got mine a little bit of a work ahead here and just to save time, but I'm gonna go over all the steps on that. So setting this up to begin with, you wanna make sure that you place, find your transfer paper. We're gonna place this down facing the canvas, dull gray side faces up, and then the shiny black side faces the canvas. I only tape at the top, and sometimes the transfer paper is just a little bit smaller than this. If that's the case, just go ahead and center it in the middle of the canvas there, and then uh, also just center this image in the middle of the canvas, just center. And then on this particular image, because the legs are leveled up with the base of the canvas, basically just kind of run off there, I go ahead and just, so it's centered from here to here, and then at the edge, I just make sure that the line art goes to the very edge of the canvas here. And then I just do a little piece of tape here, a little piece of tape here, and then we're all ready to start to do our trace. Um, there's also a pencil that comes here in your kit. And basically you're just gonna draw right over the top. And I've already done mine, but that's basically how you'll do this entire process here. And then with the shading so that it is simulated in the exact same way, you turn the pencil over to the side and just kind of lightly graze over the top here with that shaded part. And I did a little bit of that here too, like this. And then this is a little bit of a shadow in here. Always wanna make sure just basically draw over every single part you know, and then that will give you that line that will transfer to the image. So I'm gonna go ahead and lift this off. Um, also, while you're working and before you absolutely completely lift off, you wanna make sure and check your work completely to make sure that you have done all the tracing that you need. I'm gonna do a little bit more of a hard trace with more pressure on this little section here. So I wanna make sure that it shows up. 
It's pretty light. All right, that looks a lot better. All right, so that was my final step there. That looks really good. Um, you're noticing the black line that is going to be our permanent marker. I'll talk about that here in a second. But do not lift this off until you've checked all your line work and you make sure that you have all the details in place. So I'm doing pretty well on this, I think. I've got my horizon line here and here. These are the little marks for like where that cloud line will be. I'm gonna leave those light uh, so that it stays light. We don't have any dark line to contend with. I'm done with this, so I can just go ahead and throw this in the trash. And then let's go ahead and talk about permanent marker work. So any section here that is, you know, pretty much like a, a strong iconic shape, and I don't want to lose that shape, I'm going to go ahead and do a hard line around that because uh, my paint's going to cover that anyway. And I've got my hair and my jacket and the jeans. You can see in the visual here, see if the light, yeah works pretty well. This is a really light, light line, so I don't want to contend with that dark line there. So I'm going to not do a hard dark line in these spaces, which this is like cloud cover and line there. I don't want to contend with that there. So I'm going to not do a hard black line there. Uh, so I'm good. Now, if you are a blonde, or maybe you're doing this for somebody with blonde hair and you're doing that instead of the darker brunette hair, I would recommend also leaving this line around the hair as just a light line because that can be a little bit tricky getting that dark black line obscured with blonde hair. So little helpful hint there. And then I'm gonna bring this a little bit closer so you can see all the detail in the work there. So I've got the main shading done, detailing on the hat, the clouds, the horizon line, it's all done. So now we are ready to paint. This is very exciting. Okay. All righty. So put my little visual here. Okay. All right. So first step here, let's go ahead and talk about our paint. Um, this is your brand new box of paint. I do try to, you get more than one use out of the box of paint. So I always try to reuse what I've got. So I'm using up older paint here. But if I happen to run low on certain colors, then I'll open up a new box. But as you open up your new box of paint, you will notice when you go to uncap, there will be, this is used, but you will find a silver foil lining there. You're, you're going to have to lift that off so that paint will come out of the tube. All right. So paint, we've got our brushes nearby. Let's go ahead and talk about our brushes. We have a lovely family here. And so I call this mama. And then I have little buddy, little square flat top. And then I have little bit. All right, so I've got my brushes, my napkins, uh, palette knife is an optional tool we can use at the end, talk about that. And so on our plate here, I've got some titanium white that I've already got out. So that's what that'll look like. And I already have a little bit of some of our Mars black out. And then we're gonna go ahead and get a little bit of some primary cyan blue. So we're gonna do um, that a nickel size dollop of that. All right, and Go ahead and grab, I see tiny little hints of color here, cadmium yellow. Okay, about a little pea size amount of that. Now I'm going to go ahead and start with my mama brush and we're going to go ahead and place it into the water and then just go ahead and do a little bit of a press there to release that excess water. And then I'm going to go ahead and basically pick up a nice little dollop of the white. And then we're gonna start with just a little corner touch of that primary cyan blue. And that's gonna create this really beautiful light blue. And that's gonna be our start here. Yeah, that is really lovely. All right, 
right, so we're going to go ahead and start to place this into our sky. And you want to get nice coverage over the surface here too. So I hold the brush a little bit more over to the side, parallel to the canvas, so that you get nice opaque coverage. Another thing that you can do too is grab just a little tiny touch of the water, add that in. That'll help that paint really flow into the surface area of the canvas. Continue to work this into this space. You need to mix a little bit more as you go. Just keep touching into little bits of white and our primary cyan blue. And we're just going to kind of wrap this in to this shape here. And again, Nice little short strokes here. Again, think about holding that brush more over to the side. I'm gonna do a little bit of a turn here with my canvas so that I have a good positioning to work in around. This gets to be pretty tiny here around the hat. So for just a moment, um, I need to put this brush off to the side. I'm going to go ahead and let mine rest in the water. You don't want your brushes to ever just rest off to the side with paint on them because they can dry. Acrylic paint does set up and dry pretty quickly. Um, so you don't want that to happen. That'll, make, that'll give you some sticks instead of brushes. We want brushes. I'm going to take my little bit brush, do a little bit of water, release that water, do a little spin on my towel. I'm going to do a little twirl here into that lovely primary cyan blue white mix, do a little twirl there. And then I'm going to cut in and around the shape of the hat. So with this brush hole, I'm holding it a little bit more, just like you would hold a pencil. This will give you a lot of precision and control as you start to work around that shape. So I'm just gonna do that line around the hair. I'm going to grab a little bit of water, work that into the mix, do that little twirl into the paint. And work that around the hair. So I'm just going to get that detail work done. Twirl, reload the brush. Work that into that corner. And then also around the hat here. A little bit of water. A little bit of the coral reload. And just work around that curve of the hat. Just be real steady, real slow, careful, patient with the process. And that water mixed with that primary cyan blue and white really helps it flow a little bit more into that canvas. Nice coverage into the pores of the canvas. We've got some tinier spots that continue around the hair. So we're going to go ahead and continue using a little bit right around the details, small details of the hair. And if it's a little bit translucent in areas, you can turn that handle of the brush a little bit more over to the side and get a nice amount of opaque coverage over the surface area. All right, so now rinse that out, dry off. We're gonna go back to Let's squeegee out that excess water. Back to Mama. We need a remix here. I'm going to do a dollop of the white, little touch of the primary cyan blue. And then we'll continue letting this flow into our background here.
right next to that line edge that we worked in. And this is where that cloud cover starts. Get a little rough in there. And again, just continue to fill this in. And careful, kind of turn the hand a little bit over to the side. All right, we have little tiny hints of color in the background here. So I'm going to grab a little bit of this white and just do like a little tiny touch. Just kind of lightly drag that down. And sprinkle this around a little bit. Get a little touch of white and just kind of lightly pull and softly blends in with that blue. Okay, touch there. Right. And then we have that little tiny touch of cadmium yellow. A super tiny little subtle touch of that. Really pretty. I'm going to go ahead and rinse out now. And then dry off. All right, now we have just more of some pure white for the most part, but there's just a really light, light, subtle hint of a super light gray. I'm going to grab a lot of white here. I'm going to make that really just incredibly light gray. There's just such a tiny hint of gray that if somebody were to look at this and they might just look at it and call it white, but it's just a tiny little super light gray. I'm making the lightest gray I can. So I'm gonna go ahead and place this into my cloud area here. And work that into that little area. And the blue's still just a teeny bit wet, so you get a soft little tiny blend of that blue that might get picked up into your light, light, light gray, it almost appears white. And that is actually a very uh, desirable effect. We're just creating some nice texture here. Put that in there. This has had a little bit more setup time, so I'm not get as much of a pickup of that light blue in there. If you do like the look of a little bit more of a blue mixed in with your cloud cover, you can certainly just pick up some and pull it into it. Come right next to that line edge of the jacket. Now I'm going to hold the brush more like a pencil. And just come right down to this horizon line here. All right, and just soft little strokes, just horizontally, then vertically, back and forth for texture of our cloud cover. And then I'm going to rinse out. All right, now I'm going to turn the canvas just a little bit, and we're going to do just Real light, light drags of that white. Just barely, just gently, gently touch the canvas. Real gentle touch on that. It's a light drag, so it's not just a hard line. 
can see a little soft transition between the blue sky and the cloud cover. All right, now let's rinse out, dry off again. Okay, now we're gonna start to work in that beautiful pink ground. So we're going to be using our primary magenta for this. And I'm going to do a nice, about a nickel to quarter size dollop of that. And then I'm going to take my mama brush and we're going to pick up some of this pure titanium white over here. Work that into the primary magenta. It's beautiful and bright. And we're going to lighten that up a lot. But we're also going to use some of that, we're going to leave some of that primary magenta in just a pure form so that it's that really bright, bright pink. Because we'll have touches of that that'll flow through the uh, ground line here. So I'm going to take this light pink and I'm just going to kind of run this on the edge of the brush and the horizontal, just kind of back and forth. Touch into that little tiny, you see that little corner of primary magenta? We're going to just like kind of run that into that really gentle hand so that it stays pure, a pure line that kind of transitions in there. Or that primary magenta, we're going to run that into that line. We still have a little bit of that cadmium yellow nearby. I'm going to take a little corner of that. It plays nicely with the color. Gently pull that in. Light, light, gentle hand. Horizontal. Strokes, just really light, light, gentle hand, kind of just take that back and forth. So this is that cadmium yellow with that light pink, just going back and forth in the ground line. And I'm gonna go back to a little bit more pink. Comes a little bit more pink here at the base. And just sweep the brush just back and forth, side to side. Side to side. And get into that small area there. A bit more of that primary magenta, just kind of sweep that in back and forth. More sweeps here of the primary magenta. All right, we have a little tiny area here. This won't take me very long. So I'm not be okay out here to the side, but I'm gonna go ahead and take a little bit and twirl it into that light pink. And we're just gonna work this in between the legs to match the rest of the background. Into that same color. Go back to mama. I'm going to continue. I'm going to grab a little bit more white to get more light pink blended to use. And we're going to just reach into this top section again. Nice sweeping horizontal strokes. Just back and forth. Back and forth. Now take a little tiny touch corner. Primary magenta, sweep that into that color. Really beautiful. Now a little tiny touch of the cadmium yellow. Let that warm up that ground. Beautiful and vibrant. Sweep it horizontally back and forth. Now I'm going to grab a little bit of some pure white in here. Sweeping back and forth, nice horizontal strokes. 
Now I'm going to grab more light pink. Back and forth, more white, round up some more light pink. Use the line edge of the brush here to get right next to that pant leg and sweep it back and forth in here. My sweeps horizontally. We're going to grab a little bit more of that primary magenta and just take this, sweep this to the side. I'm going to go ahead and rinse out here. Dry off. I'm going to grab a little bit more of this white, just a little tiny touch of white. And just kind of do little white drags. Push down and just light pulls. Just a little bit of some fun texture in there. A little bit more of that cadmium and yellow, and do some light pulls and through here, little vertical strokes. And I'm going to that a little bit. Just do a tiny, tiny little touch of the primary magenta, and we're going to do some light pulls at the end of the jacket here. Line edge of the brush. Light, light pulls. All right, so beautiful, very, very similar. Uh, please understand that there's a lot of nuance that happens with abstraction that cannot be absolutely replicate exactly and really shouldn't be that shouldn't be the goal the goal is for you to really enjoy this process and to allow yourself to have the freedom to play so just feel free to play and if it's similar you know that's just the main thing but definitely make sure that you have a good time with it and allow yourself that creative freedom to just play with those textures and those patterns all right so we have got a great start here and I'm going to go ahead and start to work in, let's see, decisions, decisions. Um, let's go ahead and get a nice base coat down on the jacket here with some pink. So I'm going to use my mama brush and we're going to grab a little bit more of this white. Oh, and I'll let it go. Hold on. If you do this, <laughs> I just really flung. Call me Queen Paint Slinger here. I just flung some paint. I first lift it off with a brush. It actually wasn't too bad. Take a wet brush and just kind of lift that off a little bit. All right. Okay, so now let's take uh, Mama, and we've got our white, and let me do this over here this time. <laughs> a 
little out of control. Uh, so I've got my white and I'm mixing up some really light, light, light pink here. Let's bring a little bit more. Light, light pink. All right, so we're gonna do a nice base coat of this. And then I think that, yep, that black line's gonna just bleed through, which I love. That way you can, as a beginner, you can go, oh, I don't lose my line for where that should be. So we're gonna go ahead and just work that beautiful light pink into the shape of the coat. This is, this is going to be a nice base. And we'll go ahead and cover the black line. And then again, you do want this to this line to bleed through because you want to be able to see it and know where you need to put in a shadow. So we have definitely accomplished that goal. I'm going to bring this a little bit closer so that you see what it looks like close up. Okay, so as a beginner, you can trust that that shape is there for you. I'm going to look into that hair a little bit. Now this hair here. White if you need it to blend more. Again, I'm going to go ahead and cover that line right up next to the edge. Run that soft to light pink, and then just work that right into the fringe of the coat that extends down. And if you feel like you're getting too much opaque coverage over a line that's needed, you can add a little bit of water and make sure that it stays a little bit translucent over a crucial line that you might need to bleed through. All right, quite lovely. I'm going to go ahead and I'll squeeze you out the extra paint so I have still some plenty to use and let's rinse it out. And then dry off. Let's start to make some of those beautiful blue jeans. All right, I've got my little bit brush and we still have some primary cyan blue, a little bit of that white and also the uh, Mars black also comes in handy here. So that really dark kind of a navy color. I'm gonna grab a little bit of water, work that in. This is a, a prettier indigo look. So I'm gonna go ahead and Work this in, this little shape here, a little, little bit of blue jean peeking through. And then around here. A little bit of water. Yeah, just a very similar to a pencil holds that you have nice control when you use this brush. 
Just working into that shape. A little bit of a lighter blue here. So we'll touch into this lighter blue, do a little twirl. Got a little bit more primary sign blue as well. So do that white, and then I'm gonna just barely touch on the side, drawing down the edge. Primary cyan blue, intensify the blue color of the jeans and come in on this side. A little bit more of that darker primary cyan blue. We know a little coat of that here at the top. Just very carefully going on the edge here. It's just lovely. And then let's rinse out. And then let's go ahead and work in some lovely hair. Okay. So we need brown. Now, um, again, I'm using a used paint thing, so you'll have a brand new orange, but I'm kind of squeegeeing out the remaining orange from an older paint set. So I've got and a nice but nickel sized dollop of that. There. <laughs> okay. And then let's do a little mixing little bit. So we're going to grab some black and orange. We're going to mix that together, and that's going to make brown. And you can, it's a really rich, dark chocolate brown there. If you want it to be a bit more ashy, then you can grab a little bit of white. You know, take it to a lighter brown, too. Have those little highlights in there. And then let's go ahead and grab some primary yellow. We might have a few little highlights that I'm seeing that I have done from before. I guess some kind of hits. Grab some water. Okay. So now initially I'm going to start with, I'm going to go back into the black because I've got a little bit of a shadow happening. So I'm gonna start near the brim of the hat and bring in the black. It's darker black in here. Right next to that edge. See, and that's where that permanent marker line really is. Okay, let's go. Um, if you have blonde hair, I have another tutorial online with a blonde cowgirl and I would recommend fast forwarding to that section with the blonde hair and basically just copying that little section in there but I will tell you in terms of color mixing it's going to be you're still going to be using some brown as some low lights in there and then um but a lot more of your primary yellow and your white and then you're going to add a lot more of that white and this primary yellow to make a, a a softer, lighter brown. We're going to go ahead and stick on track with what we have here within it. 
And of course, I'm going to get to some blonde highlights. So you're going to see me do a little bit of a mix with that. Pearl. I'm going to take the black and then just pull down little sections. A little bit of water, make that more easy to move. Do a little twirl. May work in a little bit more black. As a face. Of course, we have black hair. Really easy. Still probably have a few little brown lights in there. See, now I'm getting a little bit of this. I want to show you this real quick. There's a little bit of this dry brush thing happening there that I don't like. So I add a little bit more water uh, to the paint. I do this twirl. And then I'll that water will help really flow into that area to make a more fluid line to fill into that space. You can see that looks a lot better. Still working in a lot of the black to begin with, and then I'm gonna start coming in with more highlights over the top. So I, again, I have a lot more of this black there's a little bit of a residual brown on there too, but especially as I get to those ends, the water really helps me um, have more of a fluid black that flows into the ends of the hair. So I really need it in through here, grab a little more water, swirl. And that'll help fill into that, those little peekaboo spots. Get really good coverage. All right, so now let's go back. Let's grab a little water. Let's go back in with our brown and start to do some sweeps of that brown in there. And lightly go over the top. You can add a little bit more orange in so that it lightens up the brown. And a little bit of white in there too, that you can lighten up a little bit more, a little bit of that primary yellow. Off curves in here. So I'm basically taking a little bit brush, doing little pulls. And there's a little bit of a soft curve to it. So it kind of feels like you're making like a parenthesis as you're doing that curve. And then when you get to the end of the stroke, you just kind of lift off with a light hand. And then you can start to kind of twirl the brush into like little strokes of brown to add those little highlights. A little bit of pressure to help. And then if you want some of those blonder highlights in there, again, a little bit of white, a little bit of more of that primary yellow. See, and this would be more of the shadow with a blonde like more of your base, see, that's that really light, light highlight. And here it's going to be a highlight with our brown hair, but if you were blonde, that would be more of a color you use for your shadow. And then you get to 
really light highlights with white and primary yellow. Lots of plain little texture here. Add a little bit of water, maybe add a little twirl and get a coverage over the top. Really pretty. And I'm going to bring this a wee bit closer and see some of those highlights. And you can be a bit more dramatic if you want lighter lights. Again, just you can always add in a little bit more. Adjust to taste, you know, and the hair color you prefer. All right, uh, let's see here. I'm going to uh, work on our hat a little bit. All right, so I'm going to, the shadow is a little bit of gray and believe it or not, there's a, a little bit of pink in there. So I'm going to take our, we had our light gray over here, which is a, a little bit of black. A little bit of our white. And we're going to do a little tiny touch of that, that primary magenta in there. So it's almost like it's going to give it a bit of a mauve feel. And a little bit of water to make that more fluid. Or twirl. We're going to basically just follow these little shadow shapes. This is my little bit brush again, tiniest brush we got, just working that in. And you have a delicate hand. A pencil hole, just very vertical. Right up and down. I'm just going to go ahead and fill all that in for right now. And then I'm going to copy this little shadow here too that we worked in. Just kind of a soft, elongated, stretched circle, like a half circle. And then And a little twirl, and then a little bit more water, a little twirl, get a nice super fine point on the end. And then I'm going to also just follow this pencil line, really delicate look here, and follow this pencil line. Just go right in over the top. And then rinse out. And I'm gonna come in with my, it's gonna be white. So I want some titanium white. There's a little pure section right there. And I want it to be mostly white and it's just got a hint of cream to it. I have this brown mixed up over here. So I'm just gonna barely touch into the brown and then mix that in to where it just kind of pulls this to a really light, light, light cream. It's such a light cream that you can barely discern it in the lighting here. I mean, I can't, when I look at the monitor, I'm like, gosh, you can't really see that, but it's just one shade away from white. Almost like when you're picking out paint and you want, you know, eggshell. I mean, you just, it's not a pure, pure white, but it's real close at off white. So that's going to be, you want enough to, I've got a pretty good amount here. I want to make sure it's all about the same color. This is going to be the color of our cat. And then come real close to this little line here. And I want to get a better vantage point. So I'm going to go ahead and move my canvas so that I can get really close to that little 
detail of the hat. And it's just very patient, slow work. And this is the little bit brush again. And you wanna just be very careful and very carefully go right next to those little tiny lines. Wanna make sure that little gray line stays in place. So if you do accidentally paint over it, then you know basically come back in and reinforce it because you want that shadow there. I'm gonna keep that in place. Look at the this side here. Get in a little, there's a little gray line there. Keep that in place. There's a little bit of that gray line there. Keep that in place. Very carefully work around that curve, kind of do a little bit of a push and then work around. A little bit more water, I'm gonna work into that light cream color. Get right next to the edge, right near the, where the hair begins. Next to the edge. Real careful, very slow. Be patient with it. It's very pretty. Okay. All right, so that's looking really good. And then that same cream color, I'm going to do a light, light drag, just right down vertical right over the top of that shadow, just like that. Soften that up a little bit, just rinse out. I'm also coming in with just, we're gonna take a little bit of that touch of that gray and a little touch of that cream. And we're gonna work that into that little diamond pattern here. Right. Rinse out. Now we're going to come in with a teeny amount of black and a little bit of water. Do the blending on the plate so that it's watery here, but you don't want it to be too watery before you go to the canvas. You don't want to have a spill in the wrong place. So I'm going to do a little twirl, squeegee that out. And then I'm going to work very carefully into the black that comes in and around that shape. Now, if you have, uh, if your hand's not too steady and you're concerned about doing this black part, you can always let all this completely set up and dry and then use the permanent marker that we provided to do the little detail blackened work around this little hat band here. And keep in mind too that um, you know people say, well, you know, what do real artists use? And I mean, all the real artists I know, they play around with all kinds of mediums to get the look that they want. So you can absolutely uh, feel confident in knowing that it is kind of a nice cheat, but a lot of artists use nice cheats all the time, so that's okay. And then I'm going to do a little bit of this light, light, light pink here. A little bit of water, light pink. And there's just a little bit of an accent here on just a little touch of that light pink on that diamond. one. And then a little bit of that light pink there. 
You think of light pink there as a light gray shadow. Brings out. Okay. All right. So now we're going to start to work into the beautiful colors of our jacket. So I want to make sure that I get the lines in place. This is important. You don't want to lose those beautiful lines. So we're going, and by that I mean these lines here that define the coat. Uh, so I've got my uh, little bit and we've got our primary magenta. So I'm gonna go ahead, grab a little bit more water, work into that, do a little twirl. Let's go ahead and reinforce that line. You can also do a little bit more crimson and a little bit of black in with that primary magenta. Do a little bit of water. And same thing here on the other side. Follow that line all the way down so that you know where that sleeve is. And pop out and shape over the top here. All this along. And we're about to have a lot of fun with this coat because it is just crazy with beautiful color. Um, that's another uh, area where I really want you to feel a sense of freedom when you start to play with the paint and, play, and place it down. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. All right, so I'm gonna grab some more of this pure primary magenta here, it's so lovely. And we're gonna to start to play with those little chunks of color. So we've got our little bit brush here, and we'll just go into some of that. And now we've got our line in place. You know, I can start to, this kind of comes in, I can, I've got little sections of that primary region that kind of come out. Uh, you can see the dry brush happening there. And again, a little bit of water really helps with that. And if you want to soften that up a little bit, see, it kind of goes to more of like a fine watercolor look, but it permeates the pores of the canvas. And I'm just gonna kind of push um, little tiny short strokes now at that primary magenta. Poles here. And larger sections of this color. All right, 
And let's see, now we can start to come in with a little bit of a, just one shade lighter of the pink, not baby pink pink, but you know, a little bit lighter. Start to work that in. That becomes like the next section of like soft blend into this. Make sure I leave that line in place. A little bit more of that white would be another, it's medium pink in here. So again, you can be really playful with the colors that you start to add in. The main thing that you want to protect and keep defined are the lines that define the sleeves. You know, so like if you even wanted to, you know, really just go crazy and do completely different colors, I mean, you certainly could. You just want to, again, just make sure that you keep the shape in place. And then I feel like you'll be really happy um, with all kinds of creativity that can happen. The little touches here. I'm gonna go around my canvas and I go back into that water. I do not. I don't have a water drop on there, so. All right, I'm also going to start kind of play with a little bit of some orange here. Okay. Just add in more. Add me in yellow, it's really fun. So a little bit of pushes at that. Now I've got a little bit of an overpaint happening on the hair, and I'm going to want to come back in and maybe do a few little. I'll get to that, but I don't want that hair to look like it got covered up by. Uh, the coat because the hair is in the foreground, so we need to make sure and push that back out to the front. We need to get a little bit more paint here, but I will, I will get to that. But I'm going to make sure and do all the painting and have fun on the coat for a while. Make sure I get all that in. Cadmium yellow, it's very lovely. Just again, like little, just push down and pull, push down and pull, just little tiny strokes like that. Allowing that texture to just rest on the surface area. I'm with it.
And I'm also having a lot of fun with, you know, making sure the wet paint touches the wet paint. So it's a, a really pretty look that way. And I'm also going to come back in and do a little bit more of my, I've got pure white, but I, some of it I'm a little afraid might be that gray. So I'm going to do a little bit more of my titanium white. Sure, I can kind of pop back in with some of those little accents. And it kind of softly blends with some of the other colors I put in. So it kind of brings on like a peachy quality, which is really fun right now. And this is a pure white, but it's, again, it's got some more of that uh, cadmium orange, cadmium yellow. It's got a little bit of that already, that residual color on the brush. So it's not just real pure, but I did touch into that titanium white. Just kind of brings in little touches of peach, which is really pretty and fun. And just little touches, very playful. Noise come back into that uh, really pretty light pink too. We continue to work that in. And And kind of a little bit more of that primary magenta uh, near the line of the sleeve, just to keep that defined. More touches of that dramatic primary magenta. And just lots of fun little pushes. And now a bit more of that light, bright white with the lighter pinks. The tiny strokes. And get nice, pretty soft blends as the paint is still wet and it softly blends in with the next shade of paint. So as you're working wet paint to wet paint, they, they softly blend next to each other and it's really pretty. Right here, soft brush on the sleeve.
All right, really pretty. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and start to work in a little bit of that blue. So it is primary cyan blue. And then there's also a little touch of viridian mixed in with it. And then a little bit of that white. So you can go, in fact, you can go teal if you want. Um, or you can add more primary cyan blue and bring it to more of that like deep rich turquoise color. Add a little bit of water, make it a bit more fluid, a little bit of coral. Start to work in touches of it over the top. Little tiny touches. Sometimes you can push down a flat side of the brush and just get larger chunks of it. A little bit, a few more highlights here and here. I can do a few more highlights in the hair, actually, but it's kind of fun. I'm going to come back in a little bit over the hair itself, a little bit of water, a little bit of black, make that fluid again, a twirl, make sure the hair comes in over the top because it's in the foreground. And it helps kind of make that pop out to the front. And then I'm going to come back in with more of that crimson, which is that primary magenta and that black. Okay, the twirl there. And I just want to make sure I can a few little touches of that. And just little tiny touches. Mm -hmm. Kind of looking around here, making sure. Um, we do have a palette knife uh, with this paint kit. It is optional. This painting is very beautiful as it is without any palette knife work. Um, if you want a little bit of some extra texture, I'm going to do a little bit on the, I'm really so happy with the way it looks without it. I'm going to do just a little bit on the clouds. 
And let me show you that with white. So a little bit of white here, titanium white. A little bit of delicate palette knife work. I'm going to turn this. I'm going to spread that out just a little bit there. It's on the flat side, and you can just do like little drags. See how that's really cool texture? Let's bring that a little bit closer so you can see. So that's really fun. That works well in that little area there. Uh, but you can also play with the palette knife if you want extra texture in here in the jacket. My recommendation would be to let all this set up and dry and you could kind of play with extra texture just like this right over the top. So we'll just kind of leave it as it is. And I'm going to drag there. Right, lovely. All right, so our last step now will be to sign the masterpiece here. And I look around and make sure I got everything. Oh, there's one little detail I could do here. I've got some of my primary magenta, my little buddy. And I'm just gonna do a quick little. Pull. Okay. Vertical pull. So just a little teeny touch of that primary magenta just underneath the jacket and just do like long little vertical pulls there. The dry brush pull just kind of have a little hint of that pulling down the vertical stroke. All right. And then I think we're done. All right, so signing your masterpiece. So we have our uh, permanent marker here. And I highly recommend using this to sign. You just have to make sure that it's completely dry right here or it will ruin your permanent marker. So when you're done, you can just sign here and it'll be all set. All right, so it has been beautiful painting with y'all today. I think she looks gorgeous. And again, keep in mind, every time you paint this, it's going to be, you know, a little bit different every time. You want to make sure I put your personality into it. Have fun with it. And she is beautiful. She is uh, blessed with a coat of many colors. So, yeah. All right, so thank you for painting with me today. It has been a pleasure. All the supplies that you need are on our website. And of course, if you just want my original uh, with the print, that's going to be on, um, this is at Michael's. I think I also have some versions of this on my website too in Canvas and I have a print version at Michael's too. So that's exciting. All right, yay. All right, so again, thank you so much for painting with us today. Y'all have a super blessed day. We love y'all. Talk to you soon. Toodles.